comes from the Gospel of John, the first 13 verses. In fact, I think I'll read the first 14 verses. It ends up very nicely in Chad, verse 14. This is a traditional uh, Christmas reading uh, in the Christian church. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the light was the light to all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came to witness and to testify to the light that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light. He came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become God's children, who are born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. That's one of my favorite Christmas readings, even though there's no, no manger, no, no, uh, no stable, no wise men or shepherds. It says something so important about Jesus. It says something so important about his relationship to God. I always enjoy looking through and, and as I study the Bible, uh, looking and seeing all the many different names that are given, uh, especially like when we look in the Old Testament, the different names that are given to God in the Old Testament. Uh, there's Jehovah and uh, there's El Shaddai and Elohim, all, all meant to be used in a different way or at a different time. Some are just supposed to be written down, others used during worship, other names for God used during prayer. Uh, it's always beautiful and interesting for me to listen to these names. They're so usually so lyrical and beautiful themselves. But different names for God. It is appropriate, I guess, then that Jesus, God's Son, would have so many different names attributed to him. A lot of them he gave himself. He said in here in the Gospel, a lot of them, so many here in the Gospel of John, I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. I am the vine, and you are the branches. I am the living water. Over and over, so many of us, we would have a hard time going through and counting all the different names given to Jesus. That he gave himself and others, others gave him. Uh, and we wonder, well, why is that? Why so many names? Why so many different, uh, uh, different uh, names for him? So many different ways to describe Jesus, the shepherd, the water, the gate. Well, each one of these things tells us something important about Jesus. Tells us something important about him. For instance, uh, uh, when I... Whenever I do the pastor's class, one thing we're sure to do is to talk about uh, the confession of faith that the kids will give. I believe that they have lots of names for Jesus, lots of descriptions of Jesus Christ here in uh, this uh, uh, confession of faith. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and I accept him as my Lord and as my Savior. What does each of these mean? Each has an important truth that that young person needs to come to understand. Look at the ones we mentioned already. What does it mean to say that Jesus is the good shepherd? Well, we follow the shepherd. We depend upon the shepherd. And the shepherd's going to lead us to good places if we will then be humble enough to follow him and let him lead the way. What about the living water? Well, living water is abundant. It flows out. There's more than enough for everyone. And that's one thing we can say about Jesus when we talk about him being the living water. 
to all these great images. But let me point to one today. It's one that's a very Christmassy image of Jesus. Very Christmassy name for him. And no, it's not uh, one of the things like wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, all these we associate with Christmas. And, oh, they're wonderful names, aren't they? No, the name I have in mind is much simpler. It's what we read today. Jesus is the Word. The Word. Gosh, well, it sounds kind of boring in comparison to wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father. But let me tell you, this idea of Jesus being God's Word says so much to us, especially during this time of the year, because what it's really talking about is incarnation. This incredible idea that we are really celebrating each Christmas, that God would become human. The Word is made flesh and dwells among us, the Scripture said. And so John is telling us what it is. What is the Word like? Jesus Christ is the Word. Well, why is that? Well, you'll notice one thing I think is fascinating about the Gospel of John is the Gospel of John starts out the same way that the first word of the Bible starts. In the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Jesus was there. Despite the fact that Jesus of Nazareth was born in a manger there in Bethlehem, or born uh, there in a stable and laid in a manger there in Bethlehem, Jesus was also there at the very beginning. When God created the heavens and the earth, Jesus was there. Jesus Christ was in that moment. In fact, he was at work in that moment. We look back at Genesis and we see what it says there about Jesus. So we see what it says about creation. And it says that God is there and the universe is without form and void. And the Spirit of God flows over the waters. And then God begins to create. And what does God use to create? His hands? No, he uses his word. His word to create. Jesus Christ is the Word of God. Jesus Christ was there at the very beginning. Well, what does this make difference should this make to us? This particular Christmas is as fascinating as it is. It's good to know that Jesus Christ didn't all of a sudden just wasn't just created. Jesus Christ was always a part of God there from the very beginning. Well, one thing it should make us think about today and make us consider is what Jesus, what God was willing to sacrifice for us. I think this is an important message here at Christmas time. Because one thing we, we do when we read this message about Jesus being the Word of God, Jesus being present there at the very beginning at creation, was that Jesus then, in order to be born in Bethlehem, Jesus Christ had to separate himself from God. As it says in the second chapter of Philippians, he poured out his power. He became like a slave. He became in the likeness of a human being. He became a human being. We often talk, and it is important to remember, uh, Dave Rocket remembered so beautifully in his prayer today, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And that's something we see, that's something we can understand, that we have to remember. But think too, as this Christmas approaches, the sacrifice of this part of God completely united with God, completely reconciled with God, completely at peace with God. Willing to give all of that up. Willing to empty out all his power so that he could become one of the most
most defenseless little creatures on this earth, a newborn human baby. And then throughout his life to be able to teach us of God's great love. To be able to lead us and show us how we come together as one community and ultimately, yes, who is willing to die even a death on the cross, the most shameful death of all. When we think about Jesus as being a good shepherd, we think about him pleading us. When we think about Jesus being the living water, we think about his abundance. We think about Jesus being the vine and us being the branches. We think about our dependence upon him. And when we think of Jesus as the word of God, let us think, let us remember his incarnation, his willingness to become one of us. Because that's how much he loves us. That's how much he cares for us. The willingness to go from being completely united, completely at one with God Almighty to being a little human baby lying in a manger. That's the miracle of the Incarnation. That is what the Word of God can mean to us today and can say to us. But you know, the good news is we can take it a little bit further. Because this Incarnation that happened, God becoming human, this part of God pouring Himself out, pouring His power out so that He can become just a humble little baby. Well, that's just the first part of the Incarnation. That Incarnation continues with us today because Christ can be in our hearts this Christmas season. God who became flesh can live within us. And Jesus said it once again in this Gospel of John, I am with God and God is with me and you are with God and we are all together, all in your heart. This incarnation of God here in this earth, it's all through here. It's all throughout this community of faith. It's in each one of us individually. And when we live our lives, we're living out Christ's life. We can, if we so choose, we can do those things this week, this holiday season, in this year ahead that bring purpose into this world, that bring God's kingdom a little bit closer. Well, I pray as this Christmas day approaches, now just nine, ten days away as this Advent <coughs> consider what it means for Christ to be the Word of God. Consider the sacrifice that was required and consider the amount of love, the amount of care and the absolute determination to save us that are involved in the almighty becoming that little baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in the manger. Let us bow in prayer. Loving God, do help us to remember during this Christmas season the miracle of your incarnation into this world. You becoming human, becoming flesh. Lord, it is a great mystery. Help us, not necessarily to understand it completely, but help us, Lord, to appreciate it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.